Hi guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about how to find out if your agent is lying to you or not. When your real estate agent tells you that it's always better to buy property than to rent, be very careful because your agent might be lying to you. You know why? When you own a property, there are always costs that will be attributed to the purchase and to the sale. Okay, so what if you bought for a short term only? What if you intend to live in the property for just one or two years? Or let's say even three years? Did you know that when you buy, you have to pay taxes? And when you sell, you also have to pay commission and you also have to pay another round of taxes. Now, if the capital appreciation of the property is not enough to cover these expenses, then you might end up with a loss, okay? So it's not always the rule that when you buy property, you're automatically gonna make money. It's not always the case. When you invest in property, especially for end use, it's better to buy if you have a long-term use for the property. Let's say at least five years going up. But if it's very short term, like two, three years only, then you need to consider what is the potential capital appreciation of the project? Where is it located? What are the factors that may contribute to its price that will you know, uh, assure you that there will be enough capital appreciation by the time you do decide to sell the property because you're not going to be using it anymore. Okay, so please bear this in mind when agents tell you that it's always a good idea to buy property than to rent. Yes, for some cases it might be applicable, but it's always on a case-to-case -case basis. Now, some agents might tell you that it's always better to have plenty of units than just have one or a few number of units. You know why? Because they want to sell more, okay? They want to have more commissions. But you have to be careful with this because uh, if you have a lot of units that you're renting out, remember that you're going to be talking to multiple tenants. Tenants will have different issues. Not all tenants will be, you know, agreeable or amenable or will be a less of a headache for you especially when you're dealing in the lower tier developments okay? and some of these tenants might be raising you know concerns about their unit you know repair maintenance issues so you know the number of things that you have to think about grows exponentially as you have more units under your portfolio for the higher end properties okay complaints are not as as common as frequent because of course the property that they're purchasing are have better quality have better property management as opposed to the lower tier developments so you will have less hassle or less less of a problem another thing that you need to consider is the cost okay the costing and the roi how much did you acquire the property for the acquisition cost and how much is your income after expenses which is, you know, the ROI, how much does it, you know, boil down to? You need to compute that. So you need to know how much is your return after you deduct all of the expenses from renting the property out or from owning the property, okay? Now, if the yield is higher as opposed to having a fewer units, then by all means, go for that. There, there are certain benefits to having multiple units, okay? Especially if it's scattered throughout different locations, then you can be able to spread the risk but again if you know what you're doing if you study the development very well you know your market okay you have an investment plan you, you have a time horizon you have your own objectives and you know the costing and the potential return on investment then you don't have to pick a lot of properties or buy a lot of properties and spread them out in different locations you could have a strategy wherein you just have a few number of units in calculated locations okay that will provide you the best yield that you can get you can do that as well another lie that your agent might be telling you is that investing in property is risk-free okay that uh, the capital appreciation is 100 percent guaranteed after five years you'll be sure to earn 100 percent on your investment 
or he will be sure to rent it out at a certain price in the future upon turnover there's a ready market already available okay these things that agents uh, sometimes tell their buyers are not entirely true because no one can predict the future okay we, we we're not we're not Nostradamus okay we don't have a we don't have a crystal ball and even if you believe in that type of thing it's not always 100% correct right so no one can predict the future what we can do is look at past performance you know and from that performance give you an expectation of how the property might perform in the future say for example most reputable developers will have give you a track record of capital appreciation and you even have you know some companies who are into market research like Collier's Jones Lang LaSalle Lee Chu properties they give you know investment insight or data on, as to how certain areas and developments fare in the market over a certain period of time okay so it's better to rely on those information and not just with one particular agent okay you need to double check what the agent is telling you if it's true or not so that you're not fooled into investing into a property that might not give you the expectations that you know you were promised now how many of you were told by their agent that don't worry don't worry ma'am sir i'll be there even after the turnover i'll be there to serve you i'll help you rent out your unit i'll help you furnish the unit i'll help you sell the unit after okay i'll even help you pay for your real estate property tax i'll be the one to do your association dues everything okay some some agents might tell you this just to close the sale be careful with that and there have been many cases in the past i've heard horror stories from you know certain clients that told them that uh, that were told by their agent that uh, upon uh, getting the contract to sell or upon getting their commissions the agent just vanished when they had their issues or complaints to the developer or to the project or if they have any issues that they wanted to raise if they needed advice they couldn't find the agent anymore okay so be careful with this especially most especially if you get the commission of your agent okay there might be instances wherein you're tempted to ask for the commission a portion or even worse the whole commission of the agent now if you do this you can't expect that uh, 100 percent service will be given to you right because you took the bread and butter of the agent you know you 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 ask for their commission that you know that will help them feed their families so what do you expect 100 percent service uh, full service full loyalty to you when in fact you took all of their commission so we have to be wiser than that okay i, I really don't recommend that you take the commission of your agents or get what we call rebates it's an ethical number one and it's really bad practice it 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 really lowers the standards of the real estate profession once you find you know a trusted experienced you know loyal broker who gives you his or her full service now paying the commission will be worth it okay because especially if you make money on your investments if you're happy with the property and you know the agent or broker doesn't leave you hanging when you have problems or concerns then you have a partner in this investment you should think of your real estate broker or salesperson as your consultant okay you're in this together with the property that you're either buying or selling so try to find an agent okay that will have your best interest at mind but also be sure to compensate that agent for his or her service to you now some of you might be asking your agent you know how, how many years are you in the industry already or what, what's your experience in the real estate industry how many clients do you have already and some agents will be lying about this why do they lie because they want to build their credibility they want to gain your trust okay they don't want to appear as if they're a new seller to the game okay to the real estate industry how do you find out if the agent is lying to you about this you may want to ask him or her about specifics regarding the transactions that he made with this or her particular clients okay so let's say for the past month how many sales were you able to make 
uh, which particular project okay can you give me the specifics uh, who's the buyer where was he from okay what was his objective how did he get to meet you so you try to ask as specific questions as much specific questions that you can and sooner or later you'll, you'll be able to tell if the agent is really lying to you because he or she will probably stutter or will have difficulty coming up with you know the answers to your questions in a quick and spontaneous manner okay now if 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 the transactions were indeed true then the agent will have no difficulty trying to explain to you what really happened and uh, you know his passion in telling the story will be reflected in the way he presents himself or tells you about the story as a general rule if you think that your agent might be lying to you about a certain feature or a certain aspect of the negotiation let's say for the payment terms that turn over date whatever it is that that is an issue for you and you're have, having second thoughts but you really want to purchase the property you really want to proceed with the transaction okay have it in writing so have the agent you know write write it in black and white or send you an email that you know that uh, assures you that these are really the features the specs the payment terms of the property that way you have some proof if and when you know there's a disconnect between the things that were promised to you and the things that were delivered especially by the agent because there are some instances and it's very unfortunate that some agents misrepresent certain details of the project just to be able to close the sale so that's it guys that's all of the tips i have for you on how to find out if your agent is lying to you or not okay guys now share me your thoughts what do you think about this topic about my ideas about the things that we discussed if you agree or disagree or if you have something to add to the conversation please put it in the comments below i'd be glad to discuss it with you also if you like this video please don't forget to press the like button below now if you want to be updated of future videos that i'll be posting every single week please press the subscribe button below hit that bell icon as well so you get notified each time i go live with my videos and with that thank you so much for supporting this channel again let's all grow wealthy together